I'd like to uh, begin by acknowledging that we are on the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin uh, Anishinaabe people. And I want to thank you for being here because this is an important event in the national security defense um, um, ecosphere of Canada. It's a chance to talk about the security challenges we're facing. Many of those have been discussed today, and I'll discuss them a little bit as well. But I'm going to focus more on the profession of arms, the profession of arms in Canada. Uh, Admiral Grady just mentioned uh, it in the last session, but very, very important as we, uh, as we change gears and we look at the future. But it's great to see so many familiar faces uh, in the audience, uh, friends, uh, people I've known for, uh, for decades, and I know many more of you are out there in the virtual world. Now, what makes this conference so special every year is the people it attracts. The range of perspective, the depth of talent, and the breadth of experience. Nous avons des élus, des fonctionnaires. We have elected officials, people from everywhere, representative of the business world and the industry, university academic people, members of the diplomatic community, large number of companion of arms in the forces and allies, alliances, partners. Point uh, from this morning, we have diverse backgrounds, diverse areas of expertise and diverse points of view. But we have unity of purpose. We understand that our rules-based international order is the source of peace and prosperity that we and the people that we love enjoy. And we all understand that rarely has it been threatened the way that is being threatened now. Nous avons des adversaires qui... We have adversaries who we know it now will do everything to change our situation, mess up with our values, and these are adversaries aspiring to take over us where democracy and pleasure are cancelled to act assertively and aggressively to expand its regional and global influence. It has demonstrated a willingness to use diplomatic, military, and economic coercion to bully nations around the world. Russia, as we have seen, has demonstrated that it will go to any lengths, brutal, unforgiving lengths, to undermine sovereignty, democracy, and liberal values. The fact that Russia's military ambitions in Ukraine have so far failed is tribute to the unconquerable spirit of the Ukrainian people and the solidarity of their allies and friends, including us here in Canada. Now, I had the opportunity to visit Ukraine last week. You know, exactly seven days ago, I was in, uh, in Kyiv. I was there Thursday and Friday. And I can tell you that I saw firsthand the need for our continued support. And I saw the very real impact our support is having. In particular, the training our members are providing the Ukrainian fighters through Operation Unifier. I had the, uh, I had the opportunity to visit our people doing the training and it, in Poland, and it was, as always, inspiring to hear the passion for the work in their voices, to see it in their faces. You know, I was told by some of them that this is the most meaningful thing that they have ever done. In the Canadian Armed Forces, we have great people. So for all those students out there, we're hiring. Putin, pensez que... Maybe to think that the conquest of Ukraine was easy and quick. Instead of that, the combat is still on. The Ukraine people are very resistant, resilient and fighting for their own country. He tends to press on. Now, we have no reason to expect that he will relent. No idea how much damage he will do before he is stopped. So we have to take the long view and not be, be trapped by our own narrow short-term experience. We have to take the long view of history because, ladies and gentlemen, history has returned. History has shown us time and time again 
that just as orders rise, they can crumble and fall. Now, are we at such a point now? You know, perhaps so. Unless we act boldly and decisively. Do we have the collective will to defend democracy? There can only be one answer to that question. Les effets de cette guerre sont ré... The fact that the feelings are felt throughout the world, and we can expect that the greatest sacrifice would be until such time as everything is completed. We can hardly imagine all that the Ukrainian people have suffered. However, it's important also to note that that this, these people have not lost. Savagery, savagery, they have not lost their will to fight. They have not lost their optimism that a better democracy-facing future is possible. And because of this, they have not lost their sovereignty, their freedom to choose their destiny as a nation of free people. And we will continue to support them in the rules-based international order. So you know, as you know, this geopolitical upheaval comes at a difficult time for the Canadian Armed Forces as an organization. Our numbers, as you know, are not where they need to be. Our readiness is not where I would like it to be, nor where it needs to be. C'est défi important. Uh, this important challenge is due to two factors, the economy, democratic changes, pandemic, the need to evaluate our culture so that it will meet the aspirations of the Canadian population, highlighting the values that are so dear to us. Forces have risen to meet countless challenges throughout our history. I am convinced we will meet these. To do this, we've identified four essential, interconnected, and mutually supporting lines of effort that will be our focus of work from here on. And many of you have heard me talk about these, but I will repeat. The first is reconstitution, ensuring our armed forces are at an appropriate level of operational readiness through improved recruiting and enhanced retention. Viens ensuite les cultures, les The culture to, to ensure that each person, whatever it is, will find the values and the expectations of our outline in the service line. We've published a booklet last year regarding values. Our military people must reflect our values and that we put in our work, but also in the behavior, the daily behavior. We must all comply to these highly elevated norms. This is the reason we exist, and this will not change. What has changed, though, is we now view everything we do through the lens of reconstitution. What can we do? What should we do? What are the costs of acting? The costs of not acting. And the fourth is modernization. No matter how all-consuming our current operations may be and how challenging the other areas of our focus are, we are duty-bound always to continue to prepare for the future. Now, the profession of arms has always had to grapple with change, usually very rapidly. You know, the demand is often literally change or die. And we are at such an inflection point right now. The changes our world and our profession are undergoing are profound and far-reaching. And in response, we need to deeply examine our understanding of what we do and how our profession must evolve. In an era of accelerated change, there are some things we, uh, we can count on to remain the same. And unfortunately, it's taken a brutal war in Europe to force us to rediscover some of this. You know, firstly, no matter how advanced technology becomes, the nature of war is unchanging. There will be fog, fear, friction, and the human element will remain the decisive factor. It will remain a, con a contest of human will. Now, just look at Ukraine. The allies and partners have given the Ukrainians advanced weaponry, but it is their will to win. That's why they're fighting on after more than a year. At its essence, war will always be about the application of violence, killing people and breaking things. 
you know, sometimes from great distances, but often at very close quarters. And about doing it, about doing this on a large and often horrific scale. We cannot forget this. Second, training matters. So does character, motivation, and leadership. Prenons encore une fois l'exemple de la guerre. Think of the war in Ukraine. There will always be some difficulty as Ukrainians defy it to protect their families, their liberty, and their future. Fundamental military professionalism is subordination to the will of the people represented in our democracy by duly elected civilian officials. While there will be debate and disagreement on approaches, it is an unequal dialogue and the government sets the direction. All of these things remain constant, but another constant in the profession of arms is change. And you heard Commander Norad uh, say this later on, that the greatest risk in his, uh, in his view is our inability to change. So the profession of arms must adapt and evolve, both in the field and philosophically. Nous devons adapter dans... We have to adopt the new technologies, the new methodologies, modifying our way of doing things and of fighting. Combine this to the first-class technology and linked with precision, all of this is the voice of the future. This is what we see on a daily basis in Ukraine. The advanced warfare is a battle of signatures. So signature management is essential. You can't kill what you can't see. Machine-human pairing will make, more, will make war more efficient, but more ethically fraught. War is and will be multi-domain affairs. Cyber and space in concert with sea, land, and air, surrounded by a cognitive environment where powers battle for hearts and minds. And they will draw on all levers of national power, political, military, diplomatic, industrial, whole of government, whole of nation efforts. The promotion d'une culture d'innovation. It's a culture of innovation that is also linked to adopting new technologies. We have developed the experimentation and the free exchange of ideas, and we must also accept that this comes with a certain level of responsibilities. We will not be able to have true innovation and experiments if we don't accept those elements that could cause our failures. Supported by a more humble and courageous professional culture that values learning and pursuit of excellence more than its reputation. Failure must be, on a fundamental level, an acceptable outcome, so long as it leads to advancement in a broader sense. And you heard some of this discussed in the last panel. But this demands a great deal of trust amongst our members. And this trust emerges from a broader cultural change, like the evolution our military is undergoing. Diversity and inclusion matter. To be effective, militaries must reflect a broader society that comprises not just the variety of skill sets and talents, but also wide-ranging perspectives and lived experiences. This is a challenge for institutions like the military, which traditionally, out of necessity, tend to be called or tend to be what are called tight cultures, cultures that value order, uniformity, hierarchy, and control and can be resistant to change. You know, in the past, this has often been a component of success, but in a more complex and rapidly changing environment, we need to take on some aspects of a loose culture, one that is open to new ideas, is not averse to change, and values individual perspectives. We also need to evolve how we lead. Leadership must be empathetic, compassionate, humble, and most importantly, relentlessly ethical. Leadership must value and demonstrate character as much as competence, EQ as much as IQ. And indeed, if we take a look at our strategic failures over the last 
I don't know, three decades, they have been character-based, not competence-based. And we will put in court advantage. We must highlight our emphasis on the, the, a point I've been insisting on for a while, the importance of ongoing learning, of development, professional development. Best in training and education, foster an environment where curiosity is valued on par with courage, and take advantage of more informal learning activities in the workplace through mentoring and coaching. Our increasingly complex operating environments abound in ambiguity and uncertainty, and it's through ongoing education that we prepare our people to act and react effectively to the unexpected. Education is the foundation of resilience and adaptability. As the profession of arms evolves, it's crucial that every member of armed forces understands that evolution and what it means with regards to their life, both personal and professional. That's why last year we released Trusted to Serve, the new Canadian Armed Forces ethos. You know, building on a key section in its predecessor doctrine, Duty with Honour, this new ethos is a practical tool to guide our members as they apply the highest ethical and professional standards to both their work and their day-to-day -day living. Duty with Honour itself is undergoing review and revision, which will lead to successor doctrine. Provisionally entitled Fighting Spirit, it will be a clear and critical expression of our profession and a way forward to enhance its trustworthiness and capacity to perform its military function for the benefit of Canadians. Trusted to serve is, and Fighting Spirit will be, the practical doctrines that are clearly applicable to our members as they pr pursue professionalism in the, in the uh, profession of arms. For our members, they will be anchors of clarity in uncertain times. And even as those of us who have made the military our life's work are called upon to adapt and evolve, we cling rightly to some enduring truths. The profession of arms will always demand courage, resilience, and strength. Some of that toughness that was discussed earlier on. It will require physical prowess, mental toughness, and strength of character in our judgment. And it will always be a noble calling, as there is no higher purpose than the defense of one's country and one's fellow citizens. In this increasingly dangerous world, our military will be called upon more and more to defend Canadian interests and, and, and Canada. It must have the people, the capabilities, the policies, and the resources to be able to do this. And their professionalism. Their professionalism will be at the basis of all of this. I'm convinced that we are on the right track. And it continues to call. As I reflect on this profession and what it offers in the twilight of my own career, I would do it all over again. And for you students out there that are about to sign up, I am envious. <laughs>